In this video, we're going to graph linear equations. Now, we've graphed linear equations before simply by finding points and plotting those points and then connecting the dots to make lines. Uh, this time, we're going to go directly from the equation itself. And uh, we're going to uh, and we're going to figure out how to graph it that way. Okay, so uh, let's take a look here at uh, the equation y equals two x minus five. Now to start, let's just do things the way that we did it before. Let's make a table of x and y values. Okay. Now the first number I always start with is a zero for x. Okay, so I'm going to put a zero in here. The reason I always start with zero is because it's really easy. Okay, it is extremely easy to figure out what y equals when x is zero, because two times zero, well, two times zero is, is zero. Minus five is negative five. Okay, this turns out to be, and let me get, just go ahead and plot this point. Uh, zero negative five goes one, two, three, four, five. So this is a point on our line. So our line is going to go like this, or this, or this, or this. I don't know where it's going to be, but I know it's going to go through that point right there. So I know it's going to cross the y-axis right there at that point. This point where it crosses the y-axis is known as the y-intercept. Okay, The y-intercept. Okay. This is a very, very important point. Sometimes we think of this point as kind of the starting point for our line. Okay? We're going to start right there, and then we're going to go off in either direction according to, well, according to the slope. Okay? So uh, let's plug one more point in there. And uh, let's say when x is 1, for example, what's y going to be? Well, y is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 5 is, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So that means I'm going to go 1 and 1, 2, 3. Once you have two points, you have your line. All right? We can just connect these dots, and I'm going to get my line, and that line is going to look something like, uh this guy. Alright? What's the slope? Well, every time I go over 1, I go up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2. So that means the change in my y is 2, the change in my x is 1. So that tells me the slope of this line, m, is change in y divided by change in x, and that equals 2 over 1 or just 2. Uh, Alright, there we have our line. Now, really, we, we kind of cheated because we did end up using a table of points. And I said we were going to go directly from the equation. So let's look back up at this equation here. You'll notice that this equation is written y equals something times x minus something else. Let's look at those somethings. First off, the minus 5. We use that right off, right? Because this minus 5 went right there. I said 2 times 0. It doesn't matter what number you have right here. When you multiply times 0, you get 0. So whatever you have right there, that's going to be what y equals when x is 0. That's going to be your y-intercept. Okay? Now what about this other point, this other uh, number here? 2. Well, you'll notice that was our slope. Two. And let's think about that for a second. 2 times x. When I increased x by 1 here, y increased by 2. Just think about it. You're going to have uh, whatever number you have times 0 is going to be 0. Whatever number you have times 1 is going to be that number. So the difference here is going to be whatever that number was. And the difference here is going to be 1. Anything over 1 is itself, so that means that's going to give us what the slope is. This number is going to be our slope. We sometimes write our linear equations as y equals mx 
plus b. m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. And this makes it a lot easier to graph a line. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's look at the example of y equals one-half x plus three. Okay? This time, I'm not going to make a table. This time, I'm just going to go straight from the equation. I know that it's going to go through the point 0, 3, because when x is 0, y has to be 3. That's my y-intercept, so I go 1, 2, 3 right there. And I also know that the slope of my line is right there. Okay? That's my slope, which means as x increases by 2, y is going to increase by 1. Okay? My change in y divided by my change in x equals 1 half. So every time x goes up by 2, y is going to go up by 1. So let's come over here and say x increases by 2, y increases by 1. Right there. x increases by 2, y increases by 1. Right there. x increases by 2, y increases by 1. Like that. And so now you end up with a really nice line. Let's connect these dots and we get oh, something kind of like that guy. Alright? Here's, uh, let's see, this point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's just see if, uh, if, if this seems to be accurate. Is the point negative 6, 0 on our line? I sure hope so because it looks like it. Well, let's see. 1 half times negative 6 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So, yeah, it looks like it. All right? Notice, we, other than the y-intercept, we didn't have to come up with any other points. And we got our line right there. Let's do another one. Let's do y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 2. Start with the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? 0 Minus 2 is kind of like saying plus negative 2, so that's 0, negative 2. So I'm going to start right there at the point 0, negative 2. This time I have negative 3 fourths as my slope. So my slope is change in y divided by change in x. I can think of this as either negative 3 divided by 4, or I can think of it as 3 divided by negative 4. Either way, it's going to work. If I think of it as negative 3 over 4, then y is going down by 3 and x is going up by 4. So y decreases by 3 and x goes 1, 2, 3, 4, increases by 4. y decreases by 3, x increases by 4. Or I can think of it this way as y increasing by 3 and x decreasing by 4. So x is going to go to the left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh huh. Y goes up 1, 2, 3. X goes to the left 1, 2, 3, 4. Like this. And here again, our points are lining up very, very nicely. And we get this cool line like that. Sure enough, that is the line Y equals negative 3 fourths X minus 2. We can choose an arbitrary point. Let's say this one right here to check and see if this is right. This is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 8, negative 8. So if I replace x with 8, hopefully I get a negative 8 for y. If x is 8, negative 3 fourths of 8 is negative 6, minus 2 is negative 8. It works. I'm happy. Okay. Let's look at another one. Let's, oh, oh, this time we have a line, and so if we already have our line, that means we're going to have to come up with an equation that matches this line. Uh-huh. Well, let's just go in reverse order. We'll find our slope and our y-intercept, and then we'll create the equation from that. All right? Remember, the equation is going to look like y equals mx plus b. So now we just need to find what m is and what b is. Well, if I go from... Okay, first off, I can find b really easily, right? There's my y-intercept. 
it's the point where the line crosses the y-axis. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There we go. B is 6 because the point 0, 6 is our y-intercept. All right? Uh, so now let's find what the slope is. Uh, I'm going to go, remember you can choose whatever two points you want. I'm going to choose this one and this one. So to go from this point here to this point here, my y decreased by 2 and my x increased by 6. So that means my slope, which is delta y over delta x, the change in y divided by change in x, is going to be negative 2 divided by 6, and that simplifies out to be negative 1 third. And sure enough, if I, look, if I look back over here, when I went down by 1, I went over by 3, down by 1, over by 3, down by 1, over by 3. Yep, it's hitting all of these points. Okay, well, what does this tell me? Well, I've got my B, and I've got my M. All right, Y equals negative one-third X plus six is the equation for this line. Every single point on that line is going to match this characteristic. And again, let's just choose a point arbitrarily. Let's choose this one here. We haven't messed with it yet. This is the point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So negative 6, 8. So if I replace x with negative 6, I ought to get a, a, a 8 in my y. Uh, negative 6, negative 1 third times negative 6, that's negative times negative, that gets positive, and 1 third of 6 is 2. So 2 plus 6 is, yeah, 8. Got it.